Do you have a test coming up on schizophrenia? Here's 25 practice questions for you so you can get an A on your test. Ready? Let's learn psych fast. Question one, you are reviewing the chart of a 22 year old female who complains of auditory hallucinations. These have become increasingly common and are now happening on a daily basis. Which one of the following factors in her history is the strongest risk factor for psychotic disorders? A, working in the performing arts, B, long-term cannabis use, C, parent with schizophrenia, or D, history of sexual abuse as a child? The answer is B, parent with schizophrenia. The strongest risk factor for developing a psychotic disorder, including schizophrenia, is a family history. Having a parent with schizophrenia leads to a relative risk factor of 7.5. So just a side note, risk factors for developing schizophrenia, if it's a monozygotic twin, is 50%, a parent, 10 to 15%, sibling, 10%, and no relatives with, with schizophrenia, 1%. Question two, a hospitalized patient with schizophrenia is receiving antipsychotic medications. While assessing the patient, you notice signs and symptoms of a dystonic reaction. Which agent would you order? A, Benadryl, B, Propanolol, C, Risperidone, or D, Abilify? The answer is A, Benadryl. Question three. You are rounding at the hospital. You walk into the patient's room who has schizophrenia. He was started on an antipsychotic medication about a week ago, and you notice his eyes are fixed on the ceiling. How do you interpret this condition? A, akathasia. B, ocleogenic crisis. C, retrocolis. D, tardive dyskinesia. The answer is B. This is an ocleogyrus crisis. The patient is experiencing a dystonic reaction termed ocleogyric crisis in which the muscles that control eye movement tense and pull the eyeball so that the client just like looks up at the ceiling. Akathasia is manifested by restlessness with clients often reporting that they feel driven to keep moving. Retrocolis involves neck muscles. It causes the head to be pulled back. And tardive dyskinesia, well, that's involves an abnormal involuntary movement that are constant. Question four, which therapy manages the suspicious nature of a client with schizophrenia? A, milieu therapy, B, family therapy, C, group therapy, or D, behavior therapy? The answer is D, Behavior therapy involves interventions such as praising the acceptable behaviors of the client. So this type of therapy, it helps to manage the highly suspicious nature that comes with the schizophrenic patient. Question five, what is an antipsychotic? Is it A, a drug that diminishes the use of mesolimbic dopamine neurons and remits it in a later stage of the illness? B, Drugs that diminish the firing rates of the mesolimic dopamine D2 neurons, or is it C, drugs that stimulates dopamine to D2 neurons, or D, a drug that lowers the thought process of any certain individual, or is it E, a drug that stimulates and releases D2 dopamine neurons into activation? The answer is B, it's a drug that diminishes the firing rates of mesolimbic dopamine D2 neurons. Question six, after assessing a patient with schizophrenia, you document that they are having an anticholinergic crisis. What were the symptoms that you observed to warrant this? Select all that apply. Is it A, dilated reactive pupils, B, blurred vision, C, ataxia, D, coherent speech, E, facial pallor, or F, disorientation. It was three items, B, C, and F, the blurred vision, the ataxia, and the disorientation. Question seven, people with schizophrenia have a blank lifetime risk of SI along with other risk factors increasing their mortality. Is it A, 17%, B, 20%, C, 
38% or D, 10%. Unfortunately, it's D, 10%. Okay, you're in clinic. You're doing your clinical rotation. You're that PMHNP student, and you see that your patient is having hallucinations and delusions. Your preceptor comes to you and asks, hey, which neurotransmitters are responsible for the behavior? What's your response? Is it A, dopamine, B, serotonin, C, norepinephrine, or D, GABA? Tell your preceptor it's A, dopamine. Question nine, which of the following features is least recognized in long-term lithium use? Is it A, weight gain, B, fine tremor, C, alopecia, or D, goiter? Answer C, alopecia. Question 10. So you have this person you've been working with. He's 57. Been having schizophrenia, being treated for it since he's 20 years old. He has limited social interactions. You know, he likes to be alone. Never dated. Doesn't have a desire to date. His symptoms are best explained by which of the following? A, anti-social personality hygiene. B, lack of personality. C, negative symptoms. D, positive symptoms. C, all these symptoms that he's exhibiting is classified as negative. Question 11, which one of the following interventions is most likely to be beneficial in a patient with schizophrenia? Is it A, supportive psychotherapy, B, social skills training, C, adherence to therapy, or D, cognitive behavioral therapy? CPT is great for schizophrenia. Answer is D. Question 12, this 26-year-old person is in front of you. He's your patient, male, diagnosed with schizophrenia uh, after developing this severe psychosis where he suffered from hallucinations and delusions with no insight into his illness. So two weeks ago, the psychiatrist, you, okay, you, started monolanzapine depot injection to help reduce these psychotic symptoms. Also, a full blood count was done, urea and electrolytes, liver function, all that was complete beforehand. So if this patient remains on olanzapine for long-term, how often should these parameters be measured? Is it A, monthly, B, every two weeks, C, every six months, or D, annually? You draw it annually, D. Let's do a simple yes, no question. Question 13, are there any known racial differences that exist in the prevalence of schizophrenia? No, there's none. Question 14. So you've been seeing this patient for schizophrenia. Just as a routine follow-up. He's been on chlorpyrimazine for about a year now. What are you going to check for? A, weight loss. B, torticollis. C, hypoglycemia. Or D, tardiskinesia. The answer is tardiskinesia. This is a late appearing thing. So that's why you'd see it at this type of follow-up visit. It's that involuntary abnormal movement. Weight gain, not weight loss. And new onset diabetes, the hyperglycemia, that could be a possible side effect of an antipsychotic. But again, weight gain, not the weight loss and the hyperglycemia. The torticollis, dystonic reaction, those all occur early in antipsychotic drug treatment. Question 15, which one of the following symptoms may indicate mania rather than hypomania? Is it A, predominantly elevated mood, B, delusion of grandeur, C, increased appetite, or D, flight of ideas? It's B, delusions of grandeur. Remember that for mania, you want to look for the length of symptoms lasting for at least seven days. Severity and the presence of psychotic symptoms like delusions of grandeur or auditory hallucinations. The other symptoms like irritability, pressured speech, flight of ideas, poor attention, insomnia, and increased appetite, those are associated with hypomania. Question 16. So you receive a message from the PCP concern a 30-year-old man that they'd started on quetanapine. The patient has no significant past medical history of note aside from complaining of psychotic symptoms. 
The PCP already ordered a full blood count, urea and electrolytes, also liver function tests and fasted blood glucose due to him complaining that he was tired for the past two weeks. What else should be added? A, fast and lipid, weight, blood pressure, thyroid function test. B, fasting lipids, BP, prolactin, sorry. C, fasting lipids, weight, thyroid function test. Or D, fasting lipids, weight, blood pressure, or prolactin. The answer is D, fasting lipids, check the weight, check the BP, draw prolactin. So although we are generally responsible for initiating antipsychotics, it's not uncommon that PCPs either will initiate therapy or they'll ask us to take over prescribing for stable patients. We should therefore have a basic grasp of the monitor requirements to enable safe prescribing. An ECG and a cardiovascular risk assessment should also be considered depending on the patient's history. Question 17. Which of the following is not a key symptom of schizophrenia? A. Thought broadcasting. B. Visual hallucinations. C. Delusional perceptions. D. Thought withdrawal. Or E. Auditory hallucinations. Does not include those visual hallucinations. B. Question 18. Which of the following side effects is more common with atypical than conventional antipsychotics? A, weight gain. B, glycteria. C, Parkinsonosium. D, akathisia. Or E, tardive dyskinesia. That darn weight gain. Atypical antipsychotics commonly cause weight gain, and they're going to complain about this. Question 19. So a 41-year-old man with schizophrenia has been taking chloroproxamine and he develops ocular gyric crisis. What side effect is this an example of? Is it A, acute dystonia, B, akathisia, C, Parkinsonosium, D, a neuroleptic malignant syndrome, or E, tardive dyskinesia? A, this is an example of acute dystonia. Question 20. A patient with schizophrenia tells you, I'm being watched constantly by the FBI because of my job. Which response is the most appropriate for you to reply with? Is it A, tell me more about how you are being watched. B, it must be frightening to feel like you're always being watched. C, you're not being watched. It's all in your mind. D, you are experiencing a delusion because of your illness. I hope you picked B. You should say, it must be frightening to feel like you're always being watched. Sympathy acknowledged. Question 21. Which of the following is associated with a good prognosis in schizophrenia? Is it A, a strong family history? B, acute onset? C, low IQ? Or D, a lack of obvious precipitant? The answer is acute onset. A gradual rather than an acute onset is associated with a poor prognosis. Some of the prognostic indicators for schizophrenia are strong family history, a gradual onset, low IQ, premorbid history of social withdrawal, um, and a lack of obvious precipitance. Question 22. Most of the deterioration that occurs in patients with schizophrenia occurs in the first, what? Is it A, the first one to three years, B, first five to eight years, C, five to 10 years, or is it D, the first one to five years? The answer is C, the first five to 10 years. Only a few more questions. I hope you're enjoying this and you're learning a lot. Question 23. John has been doing well, and he's set for discharge from the in-service program. What is the major reason a relapse will occur? Is it A, a lack of family support, B, accessibility to community resources, C, not adherence to prescribed medications, D, stigmatization of a mental illness? 
The answer is C, non-adherence to prescribed medications. Question 24. What are the hallmark or most usual and severe symptoms of schizophrenia? A, disturbance in thought and hallucinations. B, hallucinations and delusions. C, disturbance in thought and mood. Or D, delusions and disturbance in perception. The answer is B, hallucinations and delusions. Scott's for question 25. So you're interviewing Scott. You know, Scott has schizophrenia. And then he says to you, kite, night, right height, fright. You document which of the following. A, clang association. B, stilted language. C, vibration. Or D, neologism. A, this is clang association. If you found this helpful, please share it with one of your classmates so they too can learn and do well on their test on schizophrenia. Thanks.